What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club, back from our extended break. Uh, and today, we're talking all about what we've been playing over our break, plus maybe an opportunity to hang out with me and uh, a little hint at what I've been doing these past two weeks. This is the Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club. Cue the intro. Is it working? I can't... Awesome, awesome. I started... As you can tell. I started the finger guns a little early and then it didn't jump right on it. And I was like, oh no, it's not coming <laughs> up, but it, it, it happened. It's all good. We're a little rusty, but welcome to the Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club. My name is Samson and joined to me today is the illustrious Sir Dr. J.M., a.k.a. Jordan, as he goes by in his professional work, I assume. Yeah, uh, fair. Today, yeah, t today we're going to be chatting about what we've been playing and uh, maybe what you should be playing too. It's it's going to be interesting because we've been pretty busy the past couple weeks. Maybe me a little busier than Jordan, but uh, I can't oh. wait to share what I've been playing. And it rhymes with Doki Pawn. But Jordan, before we get into that, how have you been doing? Uh, I've been well. I have been enjoying a little bit of R&R &R over the... Canadian Thanksgiving long weekend, of course. I hope everyone else was, and a happy little bit late Thanksgiving to all. Um, other than that, truth, not a whole lot of excitement around uh, my neck of the woods. How about <laughs> you? What's new and exciting with you? <laughs> well, uh, fun news is that I got married to what? my best friend. Oh. Uh, she unfortunately not not so much willing to be on camera, but she exists. She's out there. I swear, guys, just goes to a different school, you know. Yeah, sure. I'm yeah, sure. yeah. Uh, but no, it's been good. That's been a huge transition. Uh, that's kind of why I took the last two weeks off. If you didn't catch our last episode, um, so it's been a lot. It's been a lot more adjustment than what I would say I was expecting. But we are enjoying every part of it, and I think that's what matters. Uh, so. I got married two weeks. I thought I would be getting a break. Turns out I did not get much of a break to play video games. <laughs> I had like a list of games to, to, to look forward to playing over my Ooh. break. But uh, but maybe we'll dive into that a little later. Um, speaking of Canadian Thanksgiving, did you know why Canada celebrates Thanksgiving in October instead of November like our American uh, counterparts? If If I'm being honest, I would have assumed that we celebrate Thanksgiving in general because the Americans celebrate Thanksgiving and Yay. we put it in October to be different from them. That would have been my <laughs> best guess. Well, the answer is probably equally as boring. Uh, so yeah, Thanksgiving, we celebrate it because uh, the Americans also do. But, uh, well, I guess it, it it's to actually like celebrate the harvest, the end of the harvest season, start of the harvest season after growing all the stuff in the summer. Uh, but because Canada is a little more up north and a little colder, we would have to harvest our stuff uh, earlier. Of so, course. So Canada does it in October, whereas the States, which is still like huge and has different climates, they do it in November a month later. Fair enough. I yeah. never I never would have known. And the funny thing is I come from a family of farmers as well. So <laughs> I probably should have known. But uh, yeah. Well, never, you know what? I just that. read it. On the internet, I don't know why people would lie on the internet, but you can confirm that with me the next time you see them. Fair enough. Uh, awesome. So to, as you uh, might have caught on, today's episode is going to be a little bit of a catch up, like what we've been playing over the past two weeks, what's been catching our attention. Lots of huge games came out, uh, but like we do on Grow Up, Level Up, uh, we like to chat about games that we can play after our nine to five jobs. Uh Part of the mantra is like, what can we realistically fit as gamers into our schedules as people who work nine to five, come home? I don't know. Jordan's a dad. He's, he's asked to take care of another human being. Uh, I am a cat dad. I have to take care of a cat. <laughs> what, what can we realistically fit in into our evening times? Uh, so that's kind of what we're catching up on. And I don't know if that fits for me because I had the last two weeks off. However, I wasn't just slacking off so i don't know if i want to start or jordan if you want to start um i mean i can certainly start uh mm -hmm. as as you kind of alluded to um i have not been playing as nearly as many games or up to as many exciting things as i may have hoped to get to over this break um 
although, you know, if I'm being honest, I didn't really go into it with anything planned, but, uh, as I bump the mic, hopefully nobody heard <laughs> Thunderstorm. that. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, I had a, a pretty quiet, uh, break from recording in terms of my game play. And obviously we just came off Astrobot, um, and I did platinum it. So I've done everything there is to do in the game. Um, still playing it a little bit with my daughter here and there, so, you know, things have kind of slowed a little bit. So, um, not, you know, every night or anything like that. Uh, I did manage to play a little bit of the Plucky Squire with my oh, daughter again. Yes, yes. Uh, we, we dove into that together. It is, of course, free on PlayStation Plus, mm -hmm. one of the tiers. I don't know if it's the regular one or one of the higher ones. Um, it's not the highest one because I don't have that tier. But uh, that's been a fun and interesting game. I can't remember. Did we talk about it on the show? I don't think we did. We didn't touched on a little bit of it. I think I had plans to start it, and spoiler alert, I ha still haven't started it yet. But but Fair feel enough. free, yeah. To, uh, I would love to hear your thoughts about the Plucky Squire. Well, and and I won't uh, I won't say too too much. You know, I don't, I don't want to color your opinion or anything like that in case you do get to it. And also, I'm not incredibly far in. Um, I think the the big thing was that you know there was a lot of buzz around it because of how sort of creative it looks and. Uh, you know, came across in previews and things like that. If you don't know, it's sort of a 2D style um, uh, action game. But the idea is you're playing a character in a book. So, you know, you go from one side of the page to the other. Sometimes the book flips pages and then you continue on one side of the page to the other. Um, but then the whole twist that happens very early in the story is um, you eventually, your character jumps out of the book. And you're okay. on this desk in the real world, in a boy's room. Of course, the boy being the owner of the book. So, um, you can imagine, you know, this drew a lot of attention. Very creative idea. Very cool kind of uh, look to it. Obviously, transitioning from 2D to 3D. And as well as, you know, some uh, basic action game sort of um, combat. There's also sort of these word puzzles where a sentence will be on the page and it'll have a blank in it. And then on the next page, you might find a different word uh, or a different sentence with a word that you can take out of that sentence and put into one of those blanks um, to mm. manipulate the environment or what's going on. So cool idea. Um, very cool mechanic. Uh, and the way they use it is honestly very cool. Um, it, it works well and it's fun to see how you can play with those. Um, so you might have an exam a sentence where it says, the uh, blanks, or I guess the frog suddenly became blank, and you find the word big, and you put it in that sentence, and there's a frog on the screen. When you put the word big in that blank, the frog becomes big. Mm. And then you might find a different word that says tiny, and you put the word tiny in that blank, and the frog shrinks down, and suddenly you can get through a passage or something like that. Um, so they do a really good job presentation-wise, very pretty game, uh, very cool look to the 2D style, as well as the 3D when you jump out of it. But I think kind of when it released and a lot of the reviews and everything were not as high on it as I think people expected to be. Um, so I kind of went in a little trepidatious, little, uh, you know, cautious to see how exciting it was really going to be. And if I had to be honest, I think the way I'm playing it is very much not the way most reviewers probably played the game, but also not the way that a lot of people will play the game. Uh, and that is to say, I play very small sections at a time with my six-year-old who is learning to read. And it's kind of a great experience from that lens. I know, hey. obviously, I, that's that's kind of what I harp on a lot on this show is playing games with my kid. But it really is a fun way to experience things. Um, and it's got that sort of educational aspect to it where I can say, hey, I'm not, I'm not just playing games with my kid. She's learning as well. She's practicing her reading. Um, so it's kind of cool that way. Now, do I think that, you know, again, I'm only a few hours into this game. Do I think that this will hold my attention for, I don't know how long it is. Let's go eight to 10 to 12 hours. Maybe not. You know, maybe it might be a little basic if you're doing these same kind of things over and over again. And I think that's one of the criticisms I've seen is that it kind of gives you all of the mechanics early on but doesn't really build on them as you continue. Mm. Um, 
So yeah, if the game stretches out, is it still going to be as fun and engaging as I'm finding it now? Maybe not, but the way that I'm playing it, I think I really am getting a lot out of it, and, and it's, a, it's a good time. Um, am I enticed to play it on my own? Maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of like, I'd like to get further in and see if I'm still enticed to play it on my own, I think is the big thing. But for now, uh, I am enjoying my time with it. So that's awesome. one of the ones that uh, I've been kind of focusing on. Um, how about you? Did you want to throw um, one out there? Yeah, sure. Uh, before I do, though, I, I just want to like validate your style of playing. And yes, I am noticing a pattern that you do like to play games with your daughter. <laughs> but I mean, that I, I feel like that's a valid way to, to enjoy games or enjoy uh, these experiences that people make. Maybe for the Plucky Squire, that was kind of their vision is a dad playing mm -hmm. with their child and uh, or a parent playing with their child. And, and going through that way, you said that she's learning to read. And yeah honestly this game uh, they definitely didn't market it that way but it does make sense a lot as like a reading comprehension exercise yeah. type of puzzle game that's awesome yeah it's, yeah, it's love that do you did you ever play or do you remember scribble knots on the DS? Yeah, yeah, yeah i remember scribble knots yeah it i think when i first came across these word puzzles that's what i wanted it to be mm -hmm. and it's very much not that it's very much a oh way 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 watered down version of that right where scribble knots you could put in next to any word to mm -hmm. solve a puzzle and this one very much gives you the words right and it's mm -hmm. maybe two at most in most cases mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um but from that angle it is a good version for someone who's just learning to read right so awesome yeah cool yeah i love that yeah. that's really cool <laughs> i might I have to wait till I have a child to be able to play that game. No. <laughs> no, I'll check it out. I've been looking forward to it for a long time, but I didn't get around to it. And and there's there's a reason why. And maybe I'll dive into what I've been playing mm -hmm. for the past two weeks. So, preface. Uh, two weeks ago, I announced that we're taking a break. I have to go get married. Uh, in my head, I'm like, <laughs> sweet. I have some time off after the wedding. I can um, play some games, kick back. Uh, what I didn't know was that the apartment is a huge mess. The PlayStation <laughs> was moved and not set up. My PC was like, the desk was like sideways as we rearranged our, our computer room. So I did not have a gaming station. Uh, like, I guess I had my Steam Deck, but it was constantly lost in the mess and the chaos, so I could not find it. So what I ended up playing for two weeks is, I don't know if you've heard of this small indie company, Game Freak, making a game called Pokemon. Mm. Mm. Uh, turns out they did so well they made it into a card game a trading card game that you can no play way. online I so, had no idea yeah crazy <laughs> for two weeks I got really into Pokemon trading card game and I kind of did touch on this a couple weeks ago but mm -hmm. these two weeks because I had like no real gaming spot I ended up sitting at the kitchen table a lot with like a coffee and a YouTube video playing and I played Pokemon TCG on my phone uh, and that was kind of what I played for two weeks um and for those who don't know, Pokemon TCG Live, the official name, mm. is the official way to play Pokemon trading card game online. Uh, you do that by playing on your phone, and you would play against people on the PC as well. Uh, and for that version, it matches the real-life trading card game. So if uh, Stellar Crown is the newest expansion out right now, uh, you're also getting Stellar Crown cards in the game. Mm. Uh, and if you are playing... Um, uh, yeah, the next set is Surging Sparks, so when that comes out, it will also come out in the game. So there's a one-to-one -one parody between the cool. physical card game and the digital. The difference is, it's like, in the digital one, you get resources, little credits or gems or whatever to be able to craft cards, uh, but you also get booster packs that you play, or that you, that you can unlock and draw cards from and build decks from. Uh, in real life, you get the actual booster pack. I think most people are familiar with them. Uh, and Booster packs all come with a code, and if you enter that code into the online version, you'll also get that same booster pack or oh, whatever cool. product in real life, also in the game. So, uh, nice. yeah, you'll like draw more booster packs, you'll draw more um, credits or resources to play in the game. So there's kind of like a one-to-one -one parody there, but I think most people play online and they build their decks. It's a lot easier to get cards as well, like in real life, if you want to buy an expensive card, you have to track it down, and it might co it'll cost real money, like maybe right. up to $30, right? In the game, you just have to craft the card, and that makes it a lot easier. Um, but I think in the official 
and we're talking like tournaments that you play for world championships if you mm-hmm. do want to go to that level you have to play physical and then that's when you right. have to track the cards down okay but if you're just learning the game you just like pokemon and you like card games like the online is really good because i played for two weeks straight and it was really fun nice. uh the cur- currently running a wug trio deck uh awesome. i don't know if you've heard of wug trio he's oh, like i know Doug i know wug trio yeah wug trio uh he's like Doug trio but i think he's supposed to be like a nematode or something and he just mills your opponent's cards until they run out of cards, and they draw, and they can't, and then they lose. So that's the kind of player I am. <laughs> so you can't play play deck. Uh, I... But that's what I've been playing on my phone. It's like super convenient, super easy. I can maybe even pull up pull up the app now, and I it love... just pops up like that. Oh, oh no message. Uh, Not mind. connected I need to the network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. But that is uh, that's what I've been playing. It's it runs really well. Mm-hmm. The UI is not my favorite. I don't really like how they make you have like a 3D avatar that's you, and they look kind of ugly. Reminds me of Pokemon Go. I was gonna uh, say, how do they compare to the Pokemon Go avatars? Oh, okay. Um, so Pokemon. Sorry, how does it compare to Pokemon Go? Just the avatars. <laughs> oh, the avatars. I would say they're they're more like Disney characters. Okay. Pokemon Go, they're kind of like RuneScape, maybe. Yeah, sure. <laughs> World of Warcraft. But but the characters in here. Oh, here we go. I'm logged in now. Here's my character. It's a, it's a girl. Uh, for those watching oh, on yeah. YouTube on reminds the screen, me, yeah, reminds me of the Xbox 360 or like yeah. new style avatars, actually. Yeah, yeah, like cartoony. Yeah. Uh, for our audio listeners, just just imagine a Disney character, but not as detailed lead rendered. Uh, and and they don't do much. They just like kind of do a little emote along the way. Okay. Um, but yeah, I've been playing that it's been really fun um i learned a game also about two weeks ago too so it is not a hard game to mm-hmm. learn and oh the cool thing about uh pokemon tcg live is that they actually give you a lot of the top tier meta decks for not for free it's literally the first couple decks that you get okay um you just get to use these top tier meta decks and learn from them and learn how to mm-hmm. play it at, at a higher level um and then along the way you can optimize them update them there's lots of resources online like on youtube mm-hmm. I'm, I'm learning so much so uh pokemon tcg live you can play yeah. on your phone it's good for playing while drinking a coffee uh games last 15 20 maybe 30 minutes long depending on how it goes so yes. nice way to kill some time on on uh, cardio as well at the gym oh good one now because it's got live in the title mm-hmm. it begs the question are you always playing against another live person Good question. I think so. So okay. there's two there's two modes. One is the um the the uh ranked mode. Um mm-hmm. and then there's like a unranked Quick mode, play, a ranked. casual yeah. mode. Um and then there's also a, a mode called expanded. Um we're getting into the nitty gritty of how <laughs> trading card games work, right? Like uh most card games like Magic or Pokemon at least, uh every year or two they rotate out a set of cards to make room for a new set of cards to go in. One is that so there's not power creep uh, and Mm. there's not like, um, you don't always have to consider like, yeah, broken mechanics from 10 years ago still in your game. Another one is because they want you to buy more packs and Mm -hmm. buy more product. Um, So in in the online version, there is unranked and casual. Those use whatever is in the standard rotation, which I think is the past two years. Uh, I can't tell you the name of the sets because they'll rotate out in April or anything. Uh, and then there's also an expanded mode, which I goes think goes to the past like ten years of cards. Wow! But since it's like a automated digital card game, I think it's like in a beta because mm. they're not sure if every card will interact correctly yeah. with each other. So, sure. so that's like a not the official mode, but um, uh, there is a couple different modes. But I've only been playing ranked, um because there are rewards along the way and it's not not like people are too toxic mm-hmm. on the ladder you can only really emote to to <laughs> the other team right so mm-hmm. i i vaguely recall when you first started getting into this or maybe just before um i think you tweeted something like wait you're telling me that uh uh pokemon tcg live is marvel snap but pokemon ah what, I, uh, do i remember what? that correctly what a great segue into the other game <laughs> I've been playing lately. So, as we all know now, I've been on a Pokemon TCG 
kick. Uh, I bought a lot of booster packs, more than I've ever bought in my entire life. Uh, but <laughs> if you don't know, this is other game called Pokemon TCG Pocket ah, coming out okay. on October 30th. Actually, no. two weeks from our recording. So maybe we'll get oh. some impressions uh, in about two weeks. Anyways, Pokemon TCG. So there's Pokemon TCG trading card game live mm-hmm. uh, coming out at the end of the month. There's a game called Pokemon trading card game pocket and pocket is the Marvel snap. I, I would say the Marvel snap version of Pokemon. It's more mobile focused, focused on being fast. Mm-hmm. Uh, and where it differs from Marvel snap is it's not about uh, the battles or the rank ladder. Marvel snap is very much about climbing as high as you can on the mm-hmm. rank ladder. Pocket is more about opening booster packs and yeah, tr- and collecting them all. And um, another way it differs from Live is that Live follows the physical real life product. Right. I believe Pocket's going to be its own thing. Like it's going to have its own unique sets. Um, it's going to have its own rotation schedule. And uh, right now it's only available in New Zealand. So that's why I took two weeks off. I flew to New Zealand, downloaded Pokemon Pocket, wow. flew back. Oh, amazing. <laughs> to have it on my phone. And I've been playing that as well. So <laughs> Pokemon Pocket is uh, the, the Marvel Snap version of, of the trading card game. Uh, the focus is to collect, not necessarily to battle. Uh, but they do have a pretty good battle system. They tweaked all the mechanics to go from like 30-minute games to three, four, five-minute games. Cool. So way shorter. Mm-hmm. Um, pl- plus, I would say the... Um, the main mechanic of the game is checking in twice a day to open your booster pack, see what you get, and then try to collect your things. So okay. I feel like for a lot of people, that's already a big sell because it's so such a small time commitment. You spend like a minute. Mm. Your phone tells you, hey, your booster pack's ready to open. Come in, open it, and then you you move on with your day. Uh, yeah. But you get a little bit of trading card game dopamine from that. Yeah, that's um, what I was just going to say. Yeah, but there's other mechanics in there uh like the hourglasses that will reduce the time before the next booster pack unlocks oh, um there's like a wonder pick mechanic where you can choose or another lottery right like choose one card from somebody else hopefully you get the one card that you're mm-hmm. missing um so there's stuff like that so it's very much a gotcha game like it is right which is like ironic because all booster packs have it's all been gotcha yeah. this whole time but yeah, this is yeah. the most blatant gotcha po- po- version of pokemon i never uh, never so thought of that but yeah these totally yeah. are <laughs> uh th- this has been the most like gotcha modern gotcha version of pokemon which i don't mind because it's nice to just open a booster pack especially you're not mm-hmm. shelling seven bucks for one at the at the store especially you just do it for free especially <laughs> for those of us who grew up with the original incarnation mm-hmm. of pokemon trading cards and trading them on the recessed playground and everything like that Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So. And, and that's the exciting thing about pocket is they haven't launched it yet i don't know if they're still figuring it out or they're beta testing it but there is going to be a trading feature mm-hmm. um, so when the game maybe is fully out uh maybe they're just waiting yeah for the global release before they unlock that so mm-hmm. so some folks aren't farther along than other folks um yeah you'll be able to actually trade cards with your friends so, mm-hmm. yeah so you, be you have been playing in the beta though is that right uh yeah, I have flew to New Zealand, downloaded yes. my my uh Pokemon Pocket game, and then have been playing that. It's it, it it's it's pretty cool. It's it's like uh I've definitely fallen off Marvel Snap in the past like two months, so I kind of mm-hmm. was looking for that quick mm-hmm. quick hit, and Pokemon Pocket is is filling that niche for now. Um, just just because it I've been on a Pokemon kick, I think, <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but also because it, it is genuinely a a, a good designed game even though cool. where i would say 90 percent of it is just swiping to open a booster pack and getting some cards cards right? yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> some cards that aren't real cards yeah um before we hop off this pokemon uh train uh mm-hmm. oh anyways full pokemon pocket impressions in two weeks <laughs> subscribe to check that up uh before we hop off i want to actually share a little adventure i went on um last friday uh october 12th is no, this october 11th is uh, this adventure one of your adventures in new zealand <laughs> so, so i actually flew back from new zealand <laughs> and then took a road trip down to seattle oh okay <laughs> and uh went to uh what is called nba present no mm-hmm. pokemon presents nba pregame la clippers <laughs> versus 
the Portland Trailblazers at Climate Pledge Arena. Uh, so basically, Pokemon sponsored a preseason NBA game uh, at the Climate Pledge Arena, which is the arena in Seattle, close enough for me in Vancouver. So took a quick trip down and saw my first NBA game. Ooh. It was really cool. I, like the stadium, I think, was pretty packed because it attracted okay. so many like Pokemon fans, which I'll throw up a video here. Uh, for our video watchers, so it was pretty packed um, for for those fans. Bad video. Um, and it was cool. It was like a real basketball game. Oh, I guess this is the halftime show where there was a dance group. But lots Wait, of yeah. folks, yeah, wa- lots of folks uh, uh, watching. There's definitely lots of Pokemon uh, theming going on. I was I was about to ask if that dance group was. I want to be the very... They did play that song. Oh, they did play that God. song. Wow. <laughs> Amazing. Not, not the dance group, but uh, but at oh. one point they did. I think it was like one of the hype up moments, right? Good, good. There's Pikachu on the sidelines before the game started. Just I just took this... Yeah, he's just standing there watching uh, you know, really the players do his drills. <laughs> he's just right? standing in front of uh, <laughs> It was, kind of, of it was like really cool. <laughs> uh, super fun. Lots of families. Lots of Pokemon graphics and stuff. I would say, like, once the game started, the Pokemon theming kind of went to the wayside. Like, mm-hmm. like the last big Pokemon theming was, like, Charizard saying, let's get fired up, three, two, one, and the game started. <laughs> uh, and then after that, it was, like, it was kind of like, oh, okay, now it's just an NBA it's game. Just, yeah, yeah, totally. Speaking of cards, though, they did give this one thing. Jordan, if you can stall for, like, 30 seconds. Oh, yeah, okay. Well, one thing that I've learned about Samson is that he loves his card games. <laughs> and we've we've spent a lot of time talking about card games, I feel like. Not just on this episode. It's a recurring theme, which I had I've never encountered someone who enjoys card games as much as you do. Cards it might, as a mechanic in general. It might be a, a time of life thing, you know. I can't I can't be Overwatch no, no, no. cooking heads anymore. I got no, I gotta no, no. slow down. Um, but enough. anyways, they were giving out these this Pikachu trading card game. If you're watching the YouTube version, mm-hmm. uh check it out. If you're on Spotify or whatever come to youtube they're giving out this pikachu it's a card uh and it has the special thing about it is it has this rain city stamp on the bottom Ooh. right um it says rain city showcase or is it even small text <laughs> pokemon presents rain city showcase and this card uh they were giving these out for free in this like little sleeve so mm-hmm. i took i think i have like four in total i was gonna say did you take like 10 of them they were giving them out as we came in, and then I went out and for like looped a bathroom around, break, and, yeah, and then yeah. yeah, they're like, "Hey, you guys got cards yet?" It's like, "Sure, I'll take two more." Yeah, um, yeah. So, so I took two. They're like selling for like a hundred bucks on eBay right now. Oh wow! Because they have that little Rain City stamp on it. Like yeah. the Pikachu card is whatever, but it it's like an exclusive thing. It's like, oh, That's you cool. were there, so that was really fun. Oh, and speaking of that, they were like doing like a special Pokemon Go event in Pokemon Go as well. Like they they had like W and A oh, really? unknowns. Yeah, there was, like, special Pokemon. Cool. There was a gym in the middle of the stadium, too, and um, raid Pokemon kept respawning, and the oh. gym just kept filling up every single time because everybody in the stadium was playing. their yeah. phones during the game. <laughs> at, at one point while we were watching, I was, like, it was, like, the middle of the game. It was pretty close, but it got kind of, I, I don't know if boring is the right word, but it got kind of samey. So then, like, me and Queenie pulled out our phones and started catching Pokemon, <laughs> and we're like, all right, That's let's just awesome. do this for a while until, until the next period or until halftime. Uh, but overall, it was really cool. I didn't know it was like such a rare thing. But if it ever happens again, I highly recommend anybody go. Yeah. Uh, we went from Vancouver. We just took the day trip. And then we drove back at like 10 p.m., got mm-hmm. back at 12 a.m., <laughs> uh, had a wedding to go to the next day. It was, it was wild. It's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. awesome. Yeah, it was really fun. Um. Okay. Jordan, did you play any other games during our break other than Plucky Square? You know, it's funny because... You're such a big fan of these card games, and I've I've gone on record as saying that uh, Kingdom Hearts Chain of Memories, of course, mm. uh, introduced a card battle system, and that was one of the first times as a child I remember thinking, I don't like this. I don't mm-hmm. like how this plays in a game. Mm-hmm, I do so I'm that. traditionally not a fan of card mechanics in games. However, you know, I have broken the mold with Marvel Snap and uh, maybe a few others. Um. But that does lead me nicely into another game that I spent a fair amount of time with over the past couple of weeks because Bellatro came to iOS and Android. Oh, yeah. Yes. So Mm -hmm. I paid $12.99 
Uh, not something I normally do. I, I'm very averse to spending any money on apps on my phone. Mm -hmm. That's mostly just because, you know, if there's a game on my phone, I'm generally going to want to play a console or PC version of it instead. I would just rather do that rather than having the mobility kind of side of it. Um, you know, any of the games that I do play on my phone, I mean, I'm looking now like Marvel Snap, uh, Pokemon Go, and that's pretty much it in terms of what <laughs> I actually like play semi-regularly. But, you know, everyone has talked so much about Bellatro. And to me, Bellatro is not a game that I think I would ever sit down and just straight up play, right? I'm, I'm probably going to have a show on, a podcast on, the TV on, or what have you, while I'm playing it, just because the nature of the game is, you know, you're building poker hands and scoring points on it. So to me, that's not something that I really care to have on my console or on my PC, but it's perfect for my mobile. Um, so I bought it on the app store and, uh, yeah, I've fallen down the Bellatro rabbit hole. Um, I enjoy it a lot, but I will say I'm not as sucked in as I think everyone led me to believe I would be, mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe for the first couple of days there, I was playing it quite a bit, you know, during work hours and, you know, <laughs> maybe be on a meeting and just have it, you know, sitting near my monitor whoa, so whoa, nobody whoa, would whoa. know. <laughs> Uh, you know what I mean? with the, during, during with the the five minutes you had to take a break after exactly. working so hard, yes, I would yes. I would go to the washroom and yes. play. Oh or, yes, that kind of thing. But yeah, yeah um, but regardless, uh, it is a lot of fun. Um, and I'm I'm at a point where I'm trying new strategies so that I can keep it fun and engaging, which is something That's that nice. I went through with Marvel Snap as well. Um, I kind of I got really into Marvel Snap when it first came out. And then I kind of started to wane on it a little bit just because I was always playing the same kind of deck. Um, you know, I might have a, two or three variations of it with two or three cards that were swapped out just for different whatever. Um, but then I kind of found, okay, when I get bored of Marvel Snap, what's best is, hey, I'm going to try a Destroyer deck and I'll build a brand new deck, completely different meta, completely different style. Or, hey, I'm going to theme it around these characters or what have you. Um, so that's kind of where I'm at with Bellatro now too is, I played it enough that um, I, I I have fun with it. I know I like it. Um, but now I'm kind of, you know, expanding out of my initial comfort zone a little bit to try and get further because I still have yet to complete a run, uh, which is, from what I hear, you know, that's that's kind of the goal, right? It's essentially mm -hmm. a mm -hmm. card game, a poker game, roguelite. Um, so anyways, I'm having lots of fun. Um, I, I can imagine I will play it for, you know, some time to come, right? Got to get my money out of the twelve ninety nine. So <laughs> work, working hard. That's right. What is it? Twelve ninety nine Canadian fun bucks. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bellatro came to mobile. Uh, I guess a couple weeks ago now. Uh, I was a, I, I rode that wave initially when it came mm -hmm. out this year on PC. And and you're right. It is a game that you don't really sit down and and make time you out of your day to play. It is very much a oh, I'm gonna catch up on this YouTube video, I'm yeah. going to throw on Bellatro on the side, or like I'm just chatting with some friends, let me throw up Bellatro on the side. Mm -hmm. um, but there is a decent amount of strategy and challenge in it. Oh, like, yeah. like the fact that um, you have yet to to complete a run, when you do, it's going to be so satisfying, because <laughs> I, I remember completing my first run, and I'm like, yeah. finally, <laughs> I'm, a weight has been lifted. <laughs> I'm getting like closer and closer. There was a while there where I was consistently getting... I can't remember exactly what it was, but like up to like anti 12 or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then I slowly started getting past there. And I think last night I got to like 16 of 18 or something. So I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm right on the edge there of kind of like whatever it is, figuring out what I need to tweak to, to yeah, break anti, past it. anti eight or something is the, oh, yeah, is not the one 18, to, sorry, but <laughs> it, yeah. it's still pretty hard. Once you get to halfway, you're like, Oh man, yeah. I'm only halfway. And I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm barely passing the, 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 the line. Last. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I'm excited for you to get up there. Uh, I also got it on mobile. Oh, nice. But mo mobile. Uh, but oh. I haven't played it much because I think I prefer mobile games being a one-handed sure. uh, portrait mode experience. Um, yeah. Just by the nature of usually when I'm playing like Pokemon on mm -hmm. my phone or Marvel Snap, I'm like drinking a coffee or like right. having food or something on the side. Or, or if I'm riding the bus, I, I need my other hand to hold. So, yeah. so I'm, I think I'll definitely play a lot more when it, um, when they introduce that portrait mode, which Local Thump, the developer, has said that oh, really? they're working on. Yeah. Oh, so, cool. so there will be a portrait mode coming. Um, 
But for now, I will happily support it by letting it live on my phone. And <laughs> whenever I can, I'll, I'll tune in. Yeah. That's good. Um, can I do a quick book review? You know what? I would love if you did a quick book review. Awesome. Because I forgot to put this down in our notes. So surprise, you're getting a review this episode. But uh, I recently read uh, slash listened through. Uh, by recently, I finished it about an hour uh, before dinner. Nice. Uh, Play Nice, The Rise and Fall of Blizzard. Let me actually get this name right. The new book by Jason Schreier. Uh, Play Nice, The Rise and Fall and Future of Blizzard Entertainment. Written by Jason Schreier. Uh, no one has been in the industry a long time as a journalist. Does a lot of great reporting and research and journalist stuff. Uh, and this book came out, um, I guess, earlier this month. Yeah, picked it up on Audible, uh, listened through the whole thing, uh, and it's such a niche topic. It, it's so hard to pitch this some to, to someone because it's written so well. But it's such a niche topic. Like, do you care about Blizzard enough to go through their history? Like, do you have these touch points along the way? Mm -hmm. um, but if you're interested in um, seeing how a company evolves over almost thirty years, mm -hmm. um, I think that this is such a cool case study of that. Um, because it is not just how a company grew. It, it started out as like a group of friends who just kind of got bigger and bigger and bigger and had to navigate that along the way. Mm -hmm. Um, so for those who don't know, obviously Blizzard, one of the most cherished game companies, uh, one of the first like rock stars of, yeah. of the games industry, like people really regarded them as, as like, like they knew what they were doing, but. This kind of painted a picture behind the scenes of what was actually going on, how Activision got involved, and how they're forced to evolve, and kind of where they're at now. Like, like it goes pretty close up to the year 2024 that it covers. Um, and I would pitch it as, um, like, game developers are all artists, and all the artists involved, like they want to make really cool art. But how does that make sense when? You also have to be a business and the people funding your art are also looking to make money and get their return. Mm -hmm. um, and this was such a cool case study of the balance and journey that they went through. And uh, for me personally, like I have so many touch points of these major events that happened along the way. Like, for example, Diablo 3 and the auction house, they touch on that. And um, I remember the time in life when uh, where I was, I think I was just graduating when that all went down. So I was like, I didn't really know what was going on, but now I get like this context and this image of, oh, all this stuff was happening behind the scenes. Uh, this is what happened. Uh, this is how the staff felt and all that. Plus you get into the sketchy, the more scandalous stuff with the mm -hmm. uh, lawsuits oh, and harassment yeah. stuff. Um, and they definitely touch on that. Uh, and for us, like they touch on Overwatch and the Overwatch League. They don't like dive too deep into it, but I think they paint a good enough picture of the challenges the devs are facing and the challenges the business, like the business owners are facing, the team owners are facing, and why it all collapsed. Like it was pretty much knowledge that we already knew and makes sense, but it was nice to have that confirmed in the book. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's um, it's it's one that's on my list. I even went so far as to see where I could get it because um. Although I've not traditionally been much of a reader, I'm currently what I would call an avid reader. Um, so I have more than one uh, audiobook app, uh, one through the Edmonton Public Library. Um, and so I went as far as to try and figure out where I could find this book uh, other than, you know, purchase it, because obviously I could just get it through Audible. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, Audible seems to be the only place right now because it's brand new. So anyways, <laughs> I have not gotten it for that reason yet. Uh, but I think once I finish the book that I'm reading now, I really want to uh, take a stab at this one because mm -hmm. like you said, you know, um, Blizzard is in many ways prolific, you know, uh, in the in the game scene, but also as kind of breaking through to the mainstream, right? I think it was when, I think it was when Diablo 4 was uh, launching. You had people like Whoopi Goldberg tweeting, how do I play this yeah. game? Because she used to love uh, Diablo 2 or something like that back in, <laughs> yeah. back in the 90s. Um, just like, you know, Diablo as a series um, is one of those things that really kind of broke through in the early 
early ish days of modern PC gaming, right? <laughs> that's that's a lot of different words, but you understand what I mean if you know, you know, Blizzard and Diablo and such. Um, and and Blizzard, yeah, has a history of, uh, you know, the products they put out, you know, turn into gold, right? You think of StarCraft, you think of the original Warcraft uh, series and how grand groundbreaking those games were. Uh, Diablo into World of Warcraft, obviously World of Warcraft, you know, probably the one that really broke through to the mainstream with, you know, South Park episodes coming out about it mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. you know, memes um, breaking into the sort of uh, meme culture uh, world when I was in high school and things like that. Um, and then obviously, you know, Overwatch is a thing as well. But, uh, <laughs> you know, that, that, yeah, they, they play, they all play a big part of that. They like yeah. pretty much everything that you ever knew about Blizzard and, and all your different touch points, your mm -hmm. as in the audience. Yeah. And, yeah. And everybody else. Um, like you'll find a way to relate to this whole, uh, story mm -hmm. about their whole story. Cause it's like, oh, I was there. I remember that. Um, and which which is crazy about like the reach of it all and, mm -hmm. and how many different types of parties it it uh it it influenced and it, it yeah. affected um so it is a really it's a really long book i think it was like nine hours like nine yes yeah. you're, you're not reading the fantasy novels i'm reading that, oh like, heck no <laughs> part one is 10 hours right now so perfect <laughs> yeah 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 so so get in there nine hours i was like I, I listened to it on a long drive back to Seattle, yep, so that yep, helped a lot. Enough. Um but I, I found it really interesting just mm -hmm. to just to see the transformation of of not just the company and the the business side of it, but also how people grow up. How mm -hmm. people level up, grow up and level up. Level up. <laughs> Bring it brings it, back. it all back around. <laughs> like like as people grow up, their priorities change and then mm -hmm. that is reflected in the company and and uh, their motivations and everybody else involved so i found that really interesting definitely check it out uh play nice to rise fall and future of blizzard entertainment by Bef jason shrive get in there before you get off this topic as you mm -hmm. just nicely put a bow on it and now i'm gonna peel that bow back just a tiny bit it's not good. Um, slip the card underneath yeah that's right i was just gonna share an anecdote that uh jason schreier shared uh on kind of funny when he was on earlier in the week uh, mm -hmm. basically doing you know promo of his book um one of the things that he said was something he wanted with this book is he didn't want it to just be a video game book right he wants it to be approached as one of these more um you know almost biographical looks at a company's history the type of thing you would find in the business section with a um or you know, near a book that tells you the story of, I don't know, BlackBerry, Apple, you know, Microsoft, uh, that kind of thing. Um, he doesn't want it to be just strictly for the video game audience. Um, and he really wants it to kind of break through to a, a wider audience that is just interested in, you know, these insanely, uh, uh, you know, profitable tech companies, right? Um, so I've, you know, coming back to the audiobook thing, I, I've considered buying a physical copy of this. So that when I'm done with it, you know, I can lend it to my dad. Um, you know, he's he's someone who was once in, you know, into games, not so much anymore. Um, but he knows obviously that, you know, I'm a big fan of video games and everything. But he's someone who does read those kind of books, who loves those kind of stories. You know, the movie yeah. that came out about Blackberry uh just must have been a couple of years ago now and with Justin Long and things like that. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. So, anyways, um, yeah, definitely I'm obviously most people listening to this will be into video games in some way i imagine that or they're big fans of you or i so hi mom <laughs> um but uh other than that you know yeah i'm i'm also excited to to get to it um yeah just just hoping to finish up what i'm working on 100 so. percent. yeah i would say this this definitely fits that i think you achieved that goal of having it break out of the video game industry it doesn't it doesn't dwell too much in like the gamey side mm -hmm. but it does that is the subject matter so so i think jason did a really good job with that Mm -hmm. um, anyways, moving on to what's going on into the future. We talked about the past and present for sure of Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club. Let's talk about the future of Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club. Uh, this Saturday, I'm going to be going to a cool event that I kind of stumbled on. Let me share the screen. It is called Vancouver Creator Beat Up, put on by 
Oh, not by Vancouver Creative Meetups. It's put on by an organization called Twitch Vancouver, uh, which is, yes, Twitch as in twitch.tv. Um, really? These folks put on an event called the Vancouver Creator Meetup. Mix and mingle with content creators, game developers, and gamers over a casual evening of games, sips, nibbles, and good conversation. So in my eyes, I just see this as like, hey, let's just do a meetup. Let's mm-hmm. just bring some folks together that are in the games industry or people who like to play video games. Oh, hey, that's, uh, uh, oh my gosh, it's Vic. Victor Lucas. Yeah. <laughs> from, uh, from, uh, uh, play- <laughs> Electric Playground. Oh, I don't know why I'm blaming I did not scroll through these photos at a time, so I did not know he was going to be there. But that's awesome. He's uh, So this is just uh, seems like a casual meetup. I haven't gone to a meetup in a while uh, just for stuff like this. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if you are in Vancouver on Saturday, October 19th, uh, I will be at this meetup uh, at Blackbird Interactive, a studio here in Vancouver. They oh, made, cool. made a couple of games. Uh and it is sponsored by Wishes Unlimited, Offworld, and Devolver Digital. Devolver, cool. Yeah, they're around. So there's chats, food, drink, swag. Uh, mm-hmm. Plus, there's also game demos, which I think are really cool that I kind of want to check out. Mm-hmm. Um, not familiar with most of these games, except for Jackbox is going to be there. Um, <laughs> so Devolver that's going to be cool. Oh, you're <laughs> right. Okay, that makes sense. Um, but I'm excited to try some new games. Uh, I'm definitely going to be there repping Grow Up, Level Up. Uh, so if you see me there, if you're listening and you see me there, say hi to me. I'm super friendly <laughs> and cool. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. And probably on next week's episode, I'll share a little bit about my yeah. experience. Because uh, Vancouver doesn't have too many of these gaming meetups where it's industry focused. Definitely a lot right. more in other cities. So, so I want to check this out. Mm-hmm. yeah that's awesome i uh just because you brought it up i i googled to see if edmonton has any of this kind of thing and it yeah. looks like they have done an edmonton twitch community meetup uh before the mm-hmm. last one was in march um oh this year yeah yeah okay. so interesting stuff i'll keep an eye on this as well see if there's something coming you know for for my neck of the woods as well i do mm-hmm. happen to know that you know there's um there's at least one <laughs> one fan of another podcast I uh, was once on, Ready Set Pwn Podcast, uh, oh, who is yeah. in in the Edmonton area, and him and I spoke privately a couple times, and um, it, we never did meet up, but uh, but we talked about it. <laughs> Ooh, okay, so, okay, anyways, setting yeah. up a meetup. Yeah, oh, you should. Um, yeah, so that's where I'll be this weekend. Uh, there should be more meetups. I wonder yeah. if. I wonder if we are. If you would like us to do a grow up level up meetup, let us know in the in the comments. Below. Absolutely, good <laughs> yeah. idea. Awesome. Yeah. As we close out this episode, uh, I just want to share like one cool thing I did for my wedding, and then maybe we'll close out the episode. Unless you got anything else, Jordan? No, no. I'm excited to hear this cool thing. So at our wedding, um, my now wife and I are big gamers. So so. This, this is also a last minute decision. Somebody asked us, how are we going to implement you guys into our wedding? Like, like our personalities and our interests. So one kind of last minute decision we do, and I'm looping it all back. I'm bringing it up again. But we implemented Pokemon cards into our wedding. Oh, yes. And, and, and what this is, is our sign-in table wasn't a book or anything like that. It was a guest would choose their favorite Pokemon from like this nice spread on the table oh if you are listening on podcasts come over to youtube uh, i'm showing a picture uh, <laughs> but it is a table the welcome table with a nice spread of pokemon cards and the guests would go up maybe pick the first one they saw maybe pick their favorite one and then they would sign and write their message on the pokemon card which we will then put into a binder so now we have a binder of all these messages and uh and people who attended our wedding plus whatever pokemon spoke to them on the time um so feel free to take this idea. We kind of copied this from other folks as well, but uh, good good way to use up some whole Pokemon cards as well. Uh, another thing we did that's not pictured is we gave each uh, guest a photo card uh, of us, but the photo card was literally just a photo we printed out and then we put it into a sleeve. But on the back of the photo card is uh, a Pokemon card. The Pokemon is actually facing the other way, so you can't actually see what the Pokemon is. 
But when you pull the Pokemon card out to see what Pokemon you got, it also had a message from us saying, thanks for coming to our wedding. Oh, so that was kind of our that's cool. little booster pack idea. I Plus, you get a cool Pokemon card. It chose you. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so cool. Thank I you, actually, this, the image that you have up and everything you had, I, I think I must have messaged you on Instagram when I saw a picture of this or something and you you kind of explained it to me. Um, mm -hmm. I love this idea. I think that's fantastic. I uh, I would love to see what the spread is on, you know, what Pokemon you've got, you know, what, uh, mm -hmm. uh, were there any doubles, triples, you know, did people pick the same one, that kind of thing? That's true. Yeah. Well, yeah we should take another look at that, at that binder and do a little, little Make a spreadsheet. spreadsheet. Yeah. 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 Plus Most I was, Pokemon. I, I was asking folks after the wedding, um, who they who pick? tagged me in their stories and stuff. I was saying like, it's like, Oh, tell me what Pokemon you got in your, in your photo yeah, card yeah. that we gave you. And half of them i would say didn't, didn't even know think yeah. to pull out the card <laughs> uh, and see what they got um but then once they did they saw our message and then they also got their pokemon card so nice uh, thanks to everybody who attended our wedding you can come to the next one jordan the next wedding um <laughs> you might want to talk to your your other half there about that because, uh, don't know if that's something most people plan on a second wedding <laughs> I'm joking too. For the record, everybody, <laughs> it's a big joke. Okay. Yeah, yeah, sure, <laughs> sure. Uh, anyways, that is our episode of Grow Up Level Up Gamers Club for the week. Thank you for bearing through our rustiness, well, mostly my rustiness, as I get back into the swing of things. Uh, next week, we'll be back again with a couple different topics, including what uh, the creator meetup event was like. Uh, and also, maybe I'll get to my uh my backlog playlist that i plan to play uh this whole time stuff like the plucky squire mexico 1921 ufo 50 foul mm. damage i have a lot on my list that i need to get back to so not enough hours in the day in fact only five to nine what is that four hours in a day to play games <laughs> maybe if i skip dinner uh, but thank you so much for listening this week everybody uh you can find us on at grow up level up on all the socials you can find me at samson xp uh jordan where can people find you you can find me on twitter at sir dr jm that's sir drjm also on instagram at the same handle um i've got to admit i'm not incredibly active on either of them i like a lot of stuff and if you follow me and i see that you're a fan in some way i'll probably follow you back mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah i mean jordan jordan definitely lurks just tweet at him. If you got a good meme, tweet at Jordan. So true. So true. Awesome. Let us know what you thought in the comments below. Let us know what you're playing in the comments below. I would actually love more game recommendations. If it's Pokemon TCG Live, let's battle. All right. <laughs> All right, everybody. Catch you next week at Grow Up Level Up. Talk to you later. Thanks.